Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're talking about the DRP and the BCP. My name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we are talking about the DRP and the BCP. What is the DRP, the Disaster Recovery Plan, and what is the BCP, the Business Continuity Plan, and the differences between each? You know, technology is great, but it's not great when that technology fails, and worse, when that data is lost and cannot be recovered. A lot of this has to do with the sort of strategy that the business has in place around how to restore data in the event of a disaster or a significant data loss. It's essential that data is secure, it's regularly backed up, and there is a strategy in place on how to recover that data and how to recover the systems if any of those systems should fail. In some instances, if your data is lost, it could have a significant impact to your business, a significant financial loss, and in worst cases, if the data is unrecoverable, if your systems are unrecoverable, and you are spending multiple days without operations for your business, without an income coming into the, into the business itself, it could have a significant impact and potential business loss and bankruptcy in the worst case of scenarios. So it's imperative regardless of the size of the business, whether if it's a small, a medium, or a large, that there is a process, a plan in place that overlines essentially what happens in the event of a disaster for a business. The BCP and the DIP will essentially outline plans and strategies and steps that a business needs to take to be able to recover services, recover all operations if a disaster should happen or if, they, or, or if there is a significant data loss. The BCP covers really the overall business strategy continuity plan. It talks about how a department will function in the event of a disaster and how that department will recover operations in the event of a disaster. It doesn't deal directly with technology, but it deals with everything else around it. It may have an element of talking about the IT department, but it will not be focusing on how to recover IT technical systems. The DRP, on the other hand, focuses solely in the technology aspect. So the DRP and the BCP work hand in hand. The BCP from a, from a essentially overall business strategy, the DRP from a technology component. The DRP deals with the technology, how we will recover systems, how we will recover the data to be able to aid the overall BCP strategy. So let's go through the disaster recovery plan. What is the disaster recovery plan, the DRP? Essentially, when disaster strikes, it's essential to know what to do in that disaster. The DRP describes the method and the strategy a business will implement to ensure that data and IT systems are protected, adequately backed up, and are recoverable in the event of a disaster. The DRP not only talks about how to recover the data, but also puts in steps on how to restore your physical systems, your physical IT systems. If your physical hardware is damaged, how do I restore this hardware? Where do I go? Do I have to contact third parties? What sort of hardware do I need to procure? How do I reconfigure all of this hardware? And how do I set it up to be able to restore all of that data back onto my systems? So think about true, real disaster scenarios. Things could be, uh, you know, these things could be fire, they could be flooding, they could be, uh, you know, mass power outages, you know, the power is gone for significant amounts of time. Uh, cyber attacks, which is very, very real and happening more and more uh, than ever before. Each of these scenarios needs to be outlined in a disaster recovery plan and the outcome of how we will tackle each of these scenarios. Flooding, for example, may need a different response to be able to restore operations than if you are cyber attacked. Flooding may require hardware to be repurchased, procured, and replaced. In a cyber attack, it could just be a software related thing. Your hardware may not be damaged, for example. Each of these scenarios will also have a team of people that needs to work towards recovering the services. So within each of these scenarios, a different amount of generally technical people will be involved to restore these operations. 
different people from the server and the systems teams, from storage, from networking, database people, people who work in development if there are applications and programs that are damaged. So each of these guys will work together to be able to restore systems depending on the disaster scenario. They'll be outlined in a particular step form. So if data is damaged, if systems are damaged, then perhaps the systems guys will be responsible for going and procuring new servers, procuring new storage, whether if it be SAN or NAS storage systems, the network guys will be involved for acquiring new switches, new routers, new firewalls. Once all that equipment is configured, everything should be operational from a back end. We then get backup people involved to be able to go and restore data from those backups. Storage people involved to restore it perhaps from replication sites if you have that in place. And then once all of those systems are in place and data is restored, we need people such as the database and applications people to go in test and make sure that the apps and the databases are functioning, that the, the traffic is flowing between the servers, that data is flowing out to the internet if it needs to, and essentially that the applications and the business systems are operational as before the disaster happened. So it's imperative that in every disaster recovery plan, there is an outline of exactly what the backup strategy is. Backups need to be done very regularly in every single business, generally in a daily basis form. Backups need to be done frequently and need to be also sent off site. There's no point in having data and those backups sitting on site, perhaps on tapes, perhaps on USB drives. If they don't go off site and then you potentially lose an office or you have flooding to your comms room or part of your office where you are keeping that data, then there's really no point in having those backups at all. These backups need to be sent off site. Additionally to that, a lot of businesses have now incorporated what's called replication, and they actually have high availability on their systems and replication of data from one site to another. So on top of backups being sent off site, systems could actually be replicated to other systems off site. So that in the event of a disaster, if a server was to fail, if flooding was to occur and data is damaged, you know, because of systems being damaged, then we could flick over systems to systems that are running perhaps at an alternate location with data being replicated to these alternate systems. So incident types, responses, and recovery options need to be outlined in that DRP. Each scenario, each different type of disaster should be outlined with the relevant response, with the relevant recovery option for each of those responses, who will be getting involved. Now further to that, that DRP needs to have a committee of people that are reviewing and are actively involved in, the, in writing that disaster recovery plan, making sure that it is updated regularly, perhaps annually or biannually, and making sure that regular DR tests are performed because there's no point in having a disaster recovery plan outlined if you're not regularly testing it. So there could be a disaster recovery committee or a planning committee or a disaster recovery board or something similar, which is responsible for checking the DRP, making sure that the DRP is accurate and they sign off saying yes to the business, we are happy with this DRP and we are satisfied with the components in it and that we have recovered systems in regular testing. The BCP in its simplest form deals with the steps and resources and requirements required to continue business operations if a disaster was to happen, and also outlines the plan to be able to restore business operations if there is a significant loss to the business or significant harm financially. So it doesn't deal directly with the IT component. This is where the DRP comes into place. The BCP will be broken down into several sections departmental sections dealing with the HR, dealing with financial, dealing with certain management, you know, management teams, and we'll also have a component of IT which will reference the DRP which on its own will be its own independent document. It covers the where and how to recover operations and ensures that every department can continue to be operational during a disaster and that every department can be restored to its original form once the disaster has finished. The BCP will outline the communication channels and the contact methods during a disaster. Who do we contact during a disaster and how do we contact them? So for example, you've got electrical failure, you've got power failure, you've got there's an emergency, you need to contact emergency services. 
who do we contact and how do we contact them? Do we contact them over email, over phone? Is there a particular contact at each of these vendors, each of these suppliers, each of these third party contractors that you need to be working with closely during this disaster? This is going to tie in very closely to the DRP, which will outline contacts from a technology perspective. Who are our IT vendors, our IT software, our IT hardware vendors, network vendors, perhaps your service providers for your internet links, for your phone links. So they're gonna be tying very close together around the communication method and who these contact people are going to be. So the goal is to make sure that the BCP and the DRP are consistent. They are working together. Right? The data that resides in one should not contradict the other. There should be sufficient data across both of them that do not contradict each other. The data should be feeding each other, complementing each other. The DRP is not a separate document on its own, but should be working closely with the BCP. And the BCP should not be a document on its own, but working very closely with the DRP, working one in together. Essentially, it forms part of your disaster recovery strategy from a BCP business continuity and technology overall continuity as well. So in summary, every single business, regardless of the size, small, medium or large enterprise, needs to have a BCP or a DRP at a minimum. Even if it's a small business, there needs to be at least a basic BCP and DRP in place to know exactly what happens if I cannot operate. If I go into work and systems are not running, or if I get a call or I watch in the news that this particular part of my business is now not operational because there's been mass flooding, what do I do? What do I do? There needs to be a strategy in place. We need to know what to do. And as we mentioned before, there's no, there's no point in having these plans in place unless they are routinely rehearsed and that the relevant people within the business know what's in these plans and knows how to action these plans if they need to be actioned. So I hope you found that video helpful. Uh, there's definitely a lot of content there, but I would love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to be recording in future. Like my video as well and subscribe. I've got digital bike computing. There's a lot of other videos that I record fairly frequently, release videos on a fairly frequent basis. So if there's any stuff on there that you find helpful, love it if you commented and let me know and we'll see you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.